What is up guys, welcome back for games three and four of week two of the DPL between Wigglytuff's Guild, my team, and Trick of Eye. This game is a sword and shield game, the second one this week. As you guys saw last episode, we did have a Swish game as the second game. If you did make it to that game, if you didn't, then go back and watch that because you're gonna wanna know what happened. But as you can see on screen, the series score is of course 2-0. And this is game three. This is Hunter's Rain team against Low QP who is uh, Canadian and who is also a good friend of Hunter's. They didn't actually want to play each other, but Loki P is using a Victini, I don't know, sorry, a Mew, Dragonite, uh, Coco team, which off rip, we were really scared of because when we were looking through all of the drafted teams when building rain, we knew that this core specifically was going to be a problem. Hunter had to go through some loops and figure out some stuff to try to get this to work. And I think he, he did a pretty good job here, but let's check out the game and you guys will see how this played out. So turn one, we have Sableye leading off against Tapu Koko. Now this might look like the worst lead matchup of all time. However, this is exactly what we wanted. Turn one, Hunter is going to click trick and give the Tapu Koko a lagging tail. Now you probably didn't see that. I'm gonna slow it down so you can see these turns. So let's try that again. So Sableye versus the Tapu Koko and you will see that trick gives a Koko a lagging tail. It popped up on screen there for a second. Now, why is lagging tail important against Coco? Well, the exact Coco set that we expected is exactly what they brought. And it makes so much sense into us. And it is Nature's Madness, Taunt, Roost, U-Turn. That's pretty much all it needs to beat Ferrothorn, which is the main thing checking it. However, as you'll see here, Ferrothorn comes in on Nature's Madness and is able to get up rocks because it bypasses the Coco's Taunt because it is now faster thanks to the lagging tail. When turn one happened, I was watching the game and I said, mission accomplished in our personal server for the team. I said, mission accomplished. And I knew the game was gonna go well from there because now our rocks are up. They're kind of difficult to get rid of for our opponent. As you can see, their only real defogging options are this Coco, which is already revealed to be Nature's Madness Taunt. So it's probably not going to be defog. And the Mew, which is an offensive piece in this matchup, as you'll see. So. Pretty much there's no other way to remove hazards for them. So uh, now we have our rocks up. Ferrothorn is gonna go for the gyro ball. It outspeeds the Coco, but of course it still has the base power because of the, the difference in their stats. And now Thunderous is gonna come in on a U-turn. That would've been a good turn to stay in with the Ferrothorn, honestly, as uh, pretty much you know that the Coco is only clicking Nature's Madness into you, but you might wanna conserve your Coco's health. So I don't disagree entirely with this play of going into Thunderous from Hunter and uh, the Coco is going to U-turn out into Roselia. We're going to get off our own U-turn here and go into Dracovish on the Toxic Spike and proceed to go for a Ficious Rend, and that is going to knock out the Tapu Coco. Down goes that, and uh, in comes D-Knight. So we have a T-Spike up on our side. You actually can't see that right now, but there is a T-Spike up. And uh, we're going to go for another Ficious Rend here, and it does 26%, so we know that the next one's going to do about 52. Get hit with a really strong Hurricane that does 56%, and Hunter decides to switch out into Tornadus as the Dragonite roosts back up to full. Now, that would have been a really good opportunity to keep the Dragonite out of multi-scale for pretty much the rest of the game. All you have to do there is just keep clicking Ficious Rend, and it'll never get back into scale. However, you are sacrificing your Dracovish to do that. So I don't necessarily know if that was the correct play, but as you'll see later, the Dracovish doesn't actually end up doing too much. Now, Diggersby actually switches in here on our Tornadus and uh, it takes an Icy Wind, which is what we clicked, takes 6% from rocks and takes Icy Wind and takes 59% because we are Life Orb. Now I'm pretty sure if we were not Life Orb, this thing was probably EV'd to live two Icy Winds very comfortably, but because of the fact that uh, we are life orb it is not able to do that and it has to hit us with a quick attack and even if it was choice scarfed we now lowered its speed and it is no longer outspeeds us so it's forced to go for a priority move here otherwise it's just switching around on icy winds and they don't really want to do that. So Hunter gets off the second Icy Wind, is able to kill off the Diggersby, and we are now sitting at 51%. Now Mew comes in, and this is uh, this is an interesting exchange. So we go for Taunt, the Mew goes for Play Rough, so it reveals Play Rough, and uh, then we are going to switch out into Ferrothorn, get our Regenerator, and uh, we see Sucker Punch on the Mew. So now we've seen Play Rough and Sucker Punch, which those two moves should indicate to you that this is an offensive Mew and it's trying to set up in some way, either be Swords Dance or Bulk Up or something of that sort. Mew is trying to set up. There's a good chance that it also has a move for Ferrothorn, but we haven't seen that yet. 
Now, they switch out their Mew, go into Cobalion, as they want to take this opportunity to probably get up rocks, since they already have the T-Spike up on our side. And uh, now Pelipper comes in, and rocks go up. And uh, we end up uh, staying in on the Volt Switch, and I believe going for Defog here as the Roselia comes in. So we're able to Defog and get rid of the hazards. So you see the Poison Spikes disappeared, uh, the stones, so all of them are gone. Hazards are gone, Spikes go up now, as we hadn't seen uh, Spikes yet from the Roselia. That was the first time, so it's T-Spikes and Spikes. So gets up both. We go for a Roost here to get back up to full. Sludge Bomb comes out and uh, weakens us quite a bit. And it did 44% there, so we are dead to the next one. But we do defog the hazards away one last time. And now we're going to go into Ferrothorn as Roselia is going to get back up a spike. And I think it gets back up a T-spike as well here as we switch to Torn. Yes. So it gets back up the two sets of hazards. However, T-spike is literally only affecting one Mon. Sableye. Ferrothorn's immune. Uh, Pelipper's immune. Thunderous is immune. Tornadus is immune, and Dracovish is already poisoned, I believe. I think it came in earlier on a T-Spike. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I think I am wrong. I don't think it's poisoned, because it doesn't show up here. So it's only affecting Sableye and Dracovish. Dracovish is already at 44%. I think a spike would have been sufficient. I think that going for an attacking move that turn or switching out would have been a better play. But anyway, we get our in, in our Torn for free and are able to Sludge Wave with the uh, the Life Orb. Easily takes off 4% Roselia, obviously. We had Sludge Wave teched on, of course, for the Tapu Koko. Makes sense, right? Don't want that switching in on you for free. Out comes Taunt again on the Mew, and this time Hunter catches the Swords Dance. So he makes the double taunt play, even the last time Mew attacked, and we would have been dead to the play rough this time, I'm pretty sure. Did 38%. Hunter gets this turn completely right and is able to taunt the Mew as it reveals Swords Dance. Now we're gonna switch out into Dracovish, and this looks like a crazy prediction, by the way, but it's not. It's just basically sacking. The Dracovish comes in as Mew goes for Fire Blast, and I was just there like, no way, what? There's no way he made that play. Of course, the Mew is Sucker Punch, so it's just gonna revenge us anyway. <laughs> it doesn't really have to worry about it, and it just clicks Sucker. So now we know, Play Rough, Sucker Punch, Sword Dance, and Fire Blast. At this point, I'm thinking Weakness Policy as the item, because that would boost your output on both ends. Uh, however, Fire Blast is really only here for the Ferrothorn, so there is a good chance that it's actually not weakness policy and that they're just mixed because they needed to hit the ferrothorn as well as possible so in comes the thunderous this time and dragonite switches in on thunderbolt takes 24 percent and gets paralyzed so that's pretty big for us because now the d knight can't move sometimes uh we're gonna switch out we're gonna go into pelipper we're gonna get back up our rain now you will notice that we have a Barrascuta and a Seismitoad on this team, as you can see on screen. Neither of them came to this game. So Pelipper's reign is actually not that important, and I think that's why. Uh, it's only really for hitting accurate thunders and hurricanes, because other than that, like the rain doesn't need to be there, and that's reflected in Hunter's play earlier, staying in on the Roselia that was doing a lot of damage to it just to remove hazards. So it comes in here. On the uh, the Dragonite, the Cobalion switches in and we just see a Volt switch and Pelipper dies. But now the Torn can come in for completely free. And in comes Cobalion, takes an Icy Wind, takes just enough to put pretty much any set in range of Hurricane from here, which we have not yet revealed. And then we click it and down goes the Cobalion. So our Torn takes another two hits of Life Orb, of course. In comes Mew, we go for another Hurricane. I believe it goes for, it gets confused. We, it reveals Lum, so it ended up being Lum and not Weakness Policy. And I think it goes for a, uh, fi a Fire Blast here, so. Interesting play. Now, we are going to die to Sucker if we stay in. Low QP knows that, and he knows that he has to make a play. So he goes for Swords Dance here as we switch out to Ferrothorn. And uh, I think we are going to end up sacking the Pharaoh, if I'm not mistaken, to Fire Blast. Yeah. So down goes Pharaoh to Fire Blast, and in comes Thundee. And Sucker Punch, we are out of range of Sucker Punch. They would need an, uh, a crit Sucker Punch, essentially, to, to knock us out. Not an absolute max Sucker Punch, but a crit one. Uh, and it goes for a Sucker, and it gets 71. Now, we weren't completely out of it, even if that Sucker Punch killed us, because we still have Sableye's Encore into the Mew, and we can lock it into Sucker and then just recover off damage and try to beat the Dragonite using Encore as well. But that's not what happens. We don't die to the Sucker and uh, we're able to knock out the Mew with Thunderbolt. In comes the D-Knight. It reveals that it is Curse, which is the set that I brought in Mox for Hunter and uh, ends up going for E-Speed. Now, Curse with Hurricane, I hadn't seen yet. 
uh, and I didn't think to bring that, but it does kind of make sense, especially in terrain, right? Not in Coco's terrain, into rain, into a rain team, right? Because you have 100% accurate hurricanes, and a hurricane looks better into the team than a physical flying move because there is Ferrothorn, uh, there is Dracovish that can take the the physical moves a little bit better, but essentially, the hurricane was the right bring in, and that's what I should have brought, but I didn't. But anyway, E Speed comes out, and as I stated earlier, Sableye can now go for an encore and lock in the D Knight into E Speed, and it's essentially useless now. Uh, this second to last turn here, I didn't understand why uh, Hunter did this, but he went for Recover here, as opposed to going for Seismic Toss, which we know that Dragonite does not have over base 100 HP, so there's no way that it would be out of range of Seismic Toss, but he clicked Recover anyway. I'm not sure why. I guess he just got spooked or something, but it was locked into E-Speed, so there was no reason not to click uh, Seismic Toss there. Anyway, the D-Knight goes down, and uh, that's the whole game, and uh, Hunter takes it uh, in, a, in a pretty convincing fashion. I think he played his game plan perfectly. Really got, really did well after he got off that initial trick lagging tail turn and just commanded the game from there. Uh, I think that he added it under full control the entire time. So really good job from Hunter. And that puts us up 3-0. Moving on to the next game. As you can see, we have arrived in Scarlet and Violet for the first time this series. Up until now, we've played an Oras game and two Switch games. This is the first time we're hopping into Scarlet and Violet. Now, Sylvie had a really good performance week one, of course got very lucky with the freeze dry freeze into the Silvali like you guys saw. And uh, this game is wild. It is back and forth and it is just very turbulent. So I'm not even gonna get into it. We're just gonna watch what happens. So Sylvie leads off with Golden Go into the Sneezler. Now, this thing has revealed at preview, of course we have Terra preview enabled, that it is Terra ground, which is something we should have definitely considered. Considering that our Serp is Terra poison and it makes 100% sense for it to be Terra poison in this matchup. And they countered that. So now we're staring down a Terra ground Sneasler with a Goldengo and yeah, not much we can do, but we go into Talon Flame on turn one as it U-turns out and uh, does not get Flame Body Burned, of course. Now in comes Terrapagos as it will go for a Calm Mind here, I believe, this turn. And uh, Mesprit comes in. Now, I designed this Mesprit for Sylvie to take on Terrapagos and try to beat it 1v1, or at least leave it really low. So as you're gonna see here, Dark Pulse comes out and we go for Thunder Wave. Uh, and we do paralyze the Terrapagos, and we're we're at actually out of two hit KO range from Dark Pulse after leftovers, which is really nice. And uh, then the Terrapagos gets uh, Paint Split on by Mesprit, so now we're able to break its Terra Shell while healing, which it which was the idea here. And all the while this thing is paralyzed, then we're gonna hit a Crit Psy Shock on this turn lowering it even further and it gets parried again and is now sitting at 51 percent now we're going to switch on into Sui and samurott unfortunately this did not really work out as tinkaton comes in here and uh we are immediately forced out and we're going to go into goldango now the tinkaton gets up rocks and this goldango is actually designed to take on this tinkaton perfectly as you're going to see here in a sec so Tink goes for Thunder Wave. We are Lumberry, and then we go for our own Thunder Wave. As you know, Mold Breaker goes through good as gold, so they are, they are able to Thunder Wave us. We anticipated this, and we brought Lum Thunder Wave. And not only that, we also brought Sub, and they get parried. We go for Nasty Plot, so our last move is, uh, is Make It Rain. And they go for Knock Off, and they don't break our Sub. So now we're behind a Sub and uh, we can plot again, no problem, and they get full parried, and we are able to go for another make it rain here. And we are able to knock out the Tinkaton, and we are still behind a sub. Now they bring in Bruxish, and the Bruxish goes for Crunch, and we go for make it rain at plus three, and the Bruxish takes 50. So I think it's AV. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Assault Vest. Uh, assault Vest, strong jaw, obviously. Uh, it is going to follow up the next turn by going for another crunch. We are quite bulky, so we only take 56. We don't die. We go for a make it rain, and once again, we crit. So we knock out the Bruxish. Now, this might look like a good thing to you from our perspective, but actually, because we knock out the Bruxish, they now get positioning on our Goldango, and it's in here, and it basically just has to die, and now the Sneezler is in and throat chops. So if the Bruxish, Bruxish was still in, Superior would have been in for free. Uh, and we would have gotten off a Leaf Storm, and that would have been a really good position. But that's not what happens. 
Now, the Sneasler is Terra Ground and we are Terra Poison, as I mentioned earlier. So this is basically a 50-50 as to what to click here. Now, ASDF, uh, I think that's how you say his name. I'm not sure. Sorry, I didn't mention his name, by the way, at the beginning of the uh, the game. But Sylvie's opponent is ASDF uh, or ASDF <laughs> or however the hell you say that. But we are going to go for Terra Poison here this turn. And ASDF decides to U-turn to Scout. Right? Because we could have stayed grass. Because we know, and they know that we know that they are Terra Ground and they can click Terra Blast, right? So, but you see U turn, Throat Chop, you know this is probably Terra Blast. Wh what do you guys think the last move is? There's an Iron Valiant on this team. Do you think that this thing is Throat Chop, U turn, Terra Blast, and that's it? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's Dire Claw. Uh, or another poison move. It could be Gunk Shot, right? So. I think that we are aware of the set, or we should be. But anyway, we Terra Poison, uh, and we go for Leaf Storm. We not we almost knock out the Theropagos, get a round of leftovers, and um, we go for another Leaf Storm here, and we knock it out with a crit. So now we're at plus four, and I think the Sneezer comes back in, and we predict the Terra Blast go into Mesprit, and Terra Blast comes out, and we dodge it. Now right here. I think that Sylvie should have analyzed the set, looked at it and been like, okay, U-turn, Throat Chop, Terra Blast. You're, there's no way that this set is carrying Swords Dance. There's no threat of a setup turn here. We have Pain Split and we can click it. We know they're probably clicking U-turn or Throat Chop. We would get a ton of health back because both the Rillaboom and the Iron Jogulus are at full. No matter what they click here, we're getting health back, and we're more, more specially defensive than we are physically defensive, so we're actually taking increased damage, even though we're a bulky set, from either one of uh, Sneasler's attacks here. So, Pain Split here would have actually dealt some damage to the Sneasler. Um, we end up going for the Psy Shock, which still deals damage, as you can see it does 50%, and you take that damage, obviously, you, you take that every day, but had we Pain Split, we would have been out of range of the next attack and we could have followed it up with another Psy Shock. Now, granted, at that point, they can U-turn and then we're in a worse position if they go Jugulus. So you could argue that this is a 50-50 and that all of this is hindsight, but I think that Pain Split was still relatively free of a click. Um, but anyway, Mesprit's gonna take a Throat Chop here. It's gonna take another one and it's gonna go down. And now in comes the Talon Flame. And the Talon Flame is actually not Boots. It's Citrus Berry, because we wanted purposely to no longer have an item for two reasons. One, knock off from Rillaboom, and two, we're Acrobatics, as you'll see. So right here, Sylvie chooses to go for Swords Dance. Now I think, and uh, a couple of our teammates said it in chat after the game, I think this is a free Acrobatics turn, or at the very least, you click Roost on this turn. Uh, you click Acro or Roost, I don't think SD is the play. Why? Because, yes, you are faster than the entire team, but you do not, you do not know the Jugulus item yet, and there's a very good chance that it's just Booster or Scarf. And as it comes in, Booster pops, and the speed goes up. So now our Talon Flame is immediately forced out. We have to go into Superior. We, they go for a sub, so no prediction to be made. And uh, then they go for a Dark Pulse, put us down by 42%. We go for a Terra Blast to break the sub. We don't get flinched, luckily. And then we get Earth Powered and we die. Now, our uh, Samurai here is Assault Vest. And they go for Air Slash, do 22%. And we get off a of this Edge, so a spike is up. Uh, and now we're going to go for an Aqua Cutter, I believe. But we get flinched. So now we're sitting at 41 uh, and now we go for another Aqua Cutter here this turn, and we do break through and we knock out the Jugulus. So the Jugulus is dead. And now in comes the Rillaboom. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, this is still a good position, right? Uh, they go for Grassy Glide. Talonflame, even at 18%, doesn't die to Grassy Glide. So we should be good, right? We just Roost. We just Swords Dance. No, they have a tech called Facade. And it immediately triggers the burn on itself. If we were at full and came in at 50, we would have been able to go for a Swords Dance or a Roost, either one, and we would have been fine right here. 
but because we were at 18 and we had to roost, they're able to facade once and immediately get burned. And as you saw, it did 27%. And now they're going to click it over and over and over and burn because grassy terrain is freshly up, is not actually chipping them. And we're taking increased damage every turn. Now, granted, we are getting back some from the terrain. Uh, so we just took 56 there. We get back 50 and then another six from the terrain. So that actually evened out. That turn was completely even. Now we roost again. And this one, I believe, does 57. No, it does 60. So the high roll is like around 60, 61. And um, now we're going to roost again. Basically, we have to roost until the terrain goes away and this thing starts getting chipped because Sylvie calced and there's a pretty good chance that this thing does not drop to acrobatics like at all because we're like pretty much not invested. And um, facade comes out again. Now it's taking burn chip, but now we're not recovering from the terrain. <laughs> so we're taking heaps of damage and uh, we're going to keep roosting here and we're going to get facaded again. Now, if the Sneasler was Grassy Seed, that's no longer going to pop anymore from here. And um, we're going to go for Acrobatics. We're going to put the Rillaboom down to 12. And unfortunately, that is just not enough because our Valiant is not Booster Speed or Scarfed. It's neither. And the Sneasler is going to come in and it's going to reveal its final move after we Vacuum Wave trying to get a crit. And it is indeed Dire Claw. So few things that could have gone differently there. Now, of course, we are up 3-1, so it's fine. Uh, we can take a loss here and there, but uh, I, I do think that there were things that, that could have been played out a little bit differently here. The Pain Split turn, that feels like hindsight. The Talon Flame turn on the Jugulus switch, I think you have no reason not to roost or just acrobatics there into the... Like, even if you're, you're still at 18, at least the Jugulus comes in damaged immediately, right? It takes an acrobatics, it takes like 30, 40%. And now your superior, it, it can no longer click sub comfortably anymore uh, because it would just get its sub broken immediately. And your superior can come in the same way that it did. Uh, if they do sub, then it's fine. You just go for a Terra Blast. And then your Ceaseless Edge into say Aqua Jet or Sucker Punch, right? Either priority move would KO the Jugulus and you'd have a healthier Samurott for this exact moment. For having a 13% Sneasler on the other side that you just have to click a priority move into and win the game. So unfortunately, that's not how it played out. There are definitely some things that could get cleaned up here. I think part of it is also the team structure. I think we definitely could have won this game. You can see that by how close it was. But anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap up our third and fourth game of the week for DPL week two. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so, so that you don't miss tomorrow's video. We are gonna be covering games five and six, and Sunday we'll be doing games seven and eight. So if you're not subscribed yet and you don't wanna miss those games, make sure to hit that button, hit the bell so that you guys get notifications. You can join my Discord server in the description down below as well. I notify every upload in that server and uh, make sure to hit like on the video if you guys did enjoy as usual and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.